The web read for you. Top U.S. official murdered after Arkansas weapons test causes mass death. A shocking report prepared for Prime Minister Putin by the Foreign Military Intelligence Directorate GRU states that one of the United States' top experts in biological and chemical weapons was brutally murdered after he threatened to expose a U.S. military test of poison gas that killed hundreds of thousands of animals in Arkansas this past week. According to this report, John P. Wheeler III, Special Assistant to the Secretary of the Air Force, Washington, D.C., from 2005 to 2008, when he became the Special Assistant to the Acting Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Installations, Logistics and Environment, was found brutally murdered and dumped in a landfill, and as we can read as reported by Fox News, Delaware police are investigating the apparent murder of a former Bush official who also championed the fundraising effort to build the Vietnam Veterans Memorial on the Mall in Washington, D.C. Wheeler's body was found in Wilmington on Friday. According to police, somebody initially reported that the body was dumped out of a refuse truck, which would have been coming from Newark, onto the landfill. Newark Police spokesman Lt. Mark Farrell told Fox News that nobody had reported Wheeler missing before he was found. The Wilmington News Journal reported that Wheeler was last seen riding an Amtrak train from Washington to Wilmington, Dell, last Tuesday. Chemtrail Airplane Wheeler's military career included writing one of the most important manuals on the effectiveness of biological and chemical weapons which led to his being hired in 2009 as a consultant to the Mitri Corporation, whose Aviation System Development Department, the GRU reports, is at the forefront of creating the computer command and control systems used by the U.S. Air Force in their fleet of aerial spraying planes. These aerial spraying planes, this report continues, are based at the Little Rock Air Force Base in Arkansas that over the past few months have been involved with test dispersants of poisonous gases in the Afghanistan war theater using chemical weapon stocks obtained from Iraq and held at the Pine Bluff Arsenal, also located in Arkansas. Important to note about the Pine Bluff Arsenal, which calls itself America's Arsenal, is that it is one of the world's most specialized munitions and chemical biological defense products and services bases which Russia had previously accused of not fully reporting the chemical agents removed from Iraq, between 2003 and 2008, and taken to the U.S. for testing and subsequent destruction. According to this report, the U.S. relocated from Iraq to the Pine Bluff Arsenal an estimated 63,000 metric tons of the poisonous gas phosgene that is described as one of the most feared chemical weapons ever used due to its ability to literally cause the lungs and respiratory system to explode. Nearly immediately after Russia accused the U.S. this past summer of not fully destroying Iraq's phosgene poisonous gas stockpile the Pine Bluff Arsenal began an accelerated disposal program injecting it deep into the ground in central Arkansas, but which, unfortunately, since this past September, has caused over 500 minor earthquakes to occur raising the concerns of their local population. More frightening, however, is the claim made in this report that the Americans have also begun shipping massive quantities of Iraq's phosgene poisonous gas stocks to Afghanistan where when used they will be able to say they had nothing to do with it, and believe no one will be able to prove it either. Important to note about Iraq's phosgene poisonous gas stocks are that they are no longer able to be made by any Western country, including the United States, which makes its value as a weapon of mass destruction WMD incalculable especially in a war situation like Afghanistan where the enemy forces are firmly entrenched in hostile terrain. To the direct reason for Wheeler's murder, this report says, was this past week's transport of Iraqi phosgene poisonous gas aboard a U.S. Air Force KC-767 tanker aircraft from Little Rock Air Force Base en route to Afghanistan that shortly after takeoff had a critical malfunction of its aerial spraying computer-directed command and control system over central Arkansas causing the deaths of thousands of red-wing blackbirds. According to U.S. reports an estimated 4,000 of these birds were killed outright and were quickly removed by U.S. environmental services workers wearing hazmat suits and gas masks. Another U.S. report states that cause of death to these thousands of birds was trauma in the breast tissue, with blood clots in the body cavity and a lot of internal bleeding, which this GRE report states is consistent with phosgene exposure. Even more chilling than this incident is this GRU report stating that it was the second accidental release of phosgene poisonous gas in as many days, 
as the day before, this same U.S. Air Force KC-767 tanker aircraft also had a critical malfunction causing a release over the Arkansas River that killed over 100,000 fish. Upon Wheeler discovering what was happening with Iraq's phosgene poisonous gas stockpiles, this report continues, he traveled from his home in Delaware to Washington, D.C., where he openly confronted and threatened to expose the Pentagon and White House officials responsible. Being a Vietnam veteran who was responsible for having the famous memorial to that war erected, Wheeler was more than knowledgeable about the United States' massive chemical and biological attacks in that conflict and had vowed to not let happen again. Sadly, but all too common in the United States these days, when Wheeler threatened to go public with what was happening he was targeted for death, and as a sign to anyone else thinking of going against the regime, had his body dumped in a garbage pit for all the world to see. Today, another great American was murdered in an effort to save his country from destruction. Sadly, his death will go barely noticed. The American people seem no longer to care as they continue to seek their solace in their propaganda media lies rather than confronting the brutal truth about the monsters they have let rule over them. For hundreds of thousands of other Americans they have become so disassociated with what is happening to, and around them. They have proclaimed May 21, 2011 as the day the world will end and are giving up everything and preparing to meet their God. The great American revolutionary leader Noah Webster once said, Every child in America should be acquainted with his own country. He should read books that furnish him with ideas that will be useful to him in life and practice. As soon as he opens his lips, he should rehearse the history of his own country. The Americans living today have utterly failed to heed these words and have instead, become just what their masters have always intended for them to be imbeciles. May God have mercy on them all.
I thought it was out of an Albert Hitchcock movie. When you first get the call, you think it's a New Year's joke, but uh, it's, it wasn't a joke. I thought the mayor was messing with me when he called me. He got me up at 4 o'clock in the morning and told me he had birds falling out of the sky. This morning, residents in one BB subdivision got an unwelcome New Year's surprise. Thousands of dead birds cover the ground. Geez, what a way to start the New Year, right? Yes, sir. Last year we started it with floods, and this year birds. It really is like something out of a horror film. Every yard in the area looks a lot like this one. Dozens of birds litter the ground, and the scariest part is no one knows how they got here. Everybody's kind of amazed at this happening. Most of the animals are red-winged blackbirds, like this one. And they're not just on lawns. We found so many of them on some roads that it was difficult to drive without crushing one. We even spotted a few on rooftops. Started at 7 o'clock and picking up birds on the street, in the yards. It's been run over and just a mess. Arkansas Game and Fish has collected some of the dead animals and will perform tests on Monday to try and determine the cause. Officials believe it's weather related, like lightning or high atmosphere hail. I went under the tree, ten over here. Stephen Bryant has no clue what caused the deaths, but he understands the mess. He found around 40 dead birds on his lawns, and now he won't let his kids play here until he knows more. I wouldn't let them go outside right now. I don't really know exactly what the explanation is on the birds being out here, but I ain't going to take no chances. BB City Council has approved funding for a private company to help clean up the area. Most of the dead birds should be removed by Sunday night. Amidst all of this death, we found some birds who beat the odds. Going up and down Taylor last night, picking up the ones that didn't survive, I found this one moving around. Kelly Mayo's daughter calls this wounded bird Liza. Looking around, Miracle might have been a more appropriate name. Fish are now littering a 20-mile section of the Arkansas River near Ozark. Arkansas Game and Fish Commission spokesperson Keith Stevens says an official estimate of how many fish have died is expected on Monday, but tells the Arkansas Democrat Gazette the number is likely in the hundreds of thousands. Stevens says some of the live fish were sick and will be sent to a lab at the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff for testing.